Okay, so what we have here is a graph of arc sine, um, and you can see the domain is negative 1 to 1, and the range is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. There are five really good key points that you should always try to plot. Um, it's helpful if on the x-axis or on the horizontal axis you count by 1 halves, and on the vertical axis, if you count by pi over 6, you get all the really nice angles that uh, you're going to be able to plot. So I recommend you use those scales. Um, this graph you should memorize. I don't find this graph to be uh, all that useful, actually. So what I do instead is um, I think about this circle, which uh, hopefully you immediately are thinking that's probably the unit circle, and it definitely is. Um, and this circle, if it is the unit circle, uh, all that I need are the angles that go from negative pi over 2, which is down there at the very bottom, to pi over 2, and I need every angle in between them. So I need to go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, so that's actually uh, just this part of the circle. So the graph on the left uh, kind of represents the part of the unit circle that's uh, basically to the right of the y-axis. Um, and I use this picture all the time. So what happens is uh, we have the point 0, negative 1. That's a good point we'll be able to use. Uh, 1 half negative radical 3 over 2. And remember, on the unit circle, the y-coordinate is sine. Um, it's going to be relevant for us. So we have this, and we can just uh, fill these in. Hopefully you have all these memorized. Uh, I don't know how you're learning trig if you haven't memorized the unit circle yet. Um, so let me just finish this. So what's happening is the angles that I'm highlighting here, so it's negative pi over 2, negative pi over 3, negative pi over 4, negative pi over 6, um, and so on. Um, those are the options that we have when someone asks us to evaluate the inverse sine of some ratio that we recognize. So uh, let's see if we can use this or figure out how I use it. Um, so here's the half of the unit circle. Um, so anytime I'm doing an inverse sine problem, I draw this picture or I just think of it in my head. So it's only the right-hand side of the unit circle. And uh, let's look. So if I want to do the inverse sine of negative 1, what I'm thinking of is where on this part of the unit circle is the y-coordinate negative 1. And there's actually only one option for that. The only option is this bottom angle right down here. And I know that that angle is negative pi over 2. So the inverse sine of negative 1 is negative pi over 2. If I keep going, um, if I have to find the inverse sine of negative radical 3 over 2, well, I'm only allowed to think about this part of the unit circle that I have on the left here, um, and I need to think where on that is the y-coordinate negative radical 3 over 2. Well, it's this angle right here, and I know that that angle is negative pi over 3. So you might not know the negative versions of these angles. You might have them memorized as uh, 3 pi over 2 and 5 pi over 3, etc. Um, but you're not allowed to use those when you're talking about uh, inverse sine. If you don't really remember why you can't use them, think about how we limited the graph of sine to be just between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Um, since the graph of sine that we use to create arc sine is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, you can never get an angle out of arc sine that's not between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 is not between those, so it can't be an option, for example. Um, and then we can keep going. So the inverse sine of negative radical 2 over 2 is uh, this. It's the pi over 4 angle that's in quadrant 4, and I have to say that's negative pi over 4. Um, the inverse sine of negative 1 half is the pi over 6 angle that's in quadrant 4, and I have to say negative pi over 6. The inverse sine of 0, that's quadrantal, that's just 0. It's in radian, so it looks weird. Now I'm going to go up the list uh, to just kind of show you the symmetry here. So we have um, inverse sine of 1 half is pi over 6, Inverse sine of radical 2 over 2 is pi over 4. Inverse sine of radical 3 over 2 is pi over 3. And the inverse sine of 1 is pi over 2. Uh, so it's really not that bad. You have to memorize these values. You should definitely memorize that you're using the right half of the unit circle. Um, it's a lot of connections, but the more connections you make, the easier it is to remember everything. Um, so let me kind of summarize the way that I do these problems when I'm not just recalling them from memory which definitely we should all just be doing. So to evaluate uh, the inverse sine of x, so x is some value, uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to think of just the right half of the unit circle. So as long as we're thinking of just the right half of the unit circle, we have a chance. Um, so I always draw this little picture right here to uh, help me kind of clarify what I'm thinking of. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, decide which part. So if x is greater than 0, I'm going to use the top half of this. If x is less than 0, I'm going to use the bottom half. 
um, which means that if x is 0, I have to use uh, just the x-axis, which is the angle 0 radian, so get that one right right away. Um, and then uh, you have to think of the type of angle. So for example, if I'm doing the uh, inverse sine of 1 half, I know that's a pi over 6 angle, and it's positive, so that's quadrant 1, so pi over 6. If it's the inverse sine of negative pi, uh, negative 1 half, sorry, uh, I know that's a pi over 6 angle, but since it's negative, it's going to be negative pi over 6 because it has to come from quadrant 4. Uh, those are just two examples. Uh, you can run through all of them, and you should, over and over and over again. Um, and then the final piece of advice, which isn't really advice, it's more like a commandment, is uh, you better memorize everything. Because if you don't have everything memorized, you're, you're kind of uh, going to be stuck on a lot of these. But anyway, that's how I deal with inverse sine. Um, I hope you found this helpful. It takes a lot of practice, a lot of memorization, but... Uh, I think you'll be okay, and I hope you found this helpful, so good luck.